election is coming, and people are trying to get ready, as Gro- uh, not as Grover Norquist, as Paul Weyrich pointed out back in 1980 when he was running Ronald Reagan's mail, the uh, mail order operation of Ronald Reagan's campaign and was credited with helping R- Reagan win the presidency. And then he was later credited with helping George Herbert Walker Bush win the presidency. And then in 2000, he was Paul Weyrich was credited with helping George W. Bush win the presidency. One of the most senior Republican strategists in the country, as he said to a group of Republicans in a church in 1980. Now, many of our Christians have what I call the goo-goo syndrome, good government. They want everybody to vote. I don't want everybody to vote. Elections are not won by a majority of people. They never have been from the beginning of our country, and they are not now. As a matter of fact, our leverage in the elections quite candidly goes up as the voting populace goes down. Right. Drive down that voting populace. And thus, the Koch brothers funded American Legislative Exchange Council. Alec is pumping out these laws that states all over the country are passing, saying, oh, you got to have all kinds, 16 different kinds of ID, or maybe just one, to vote. Hans von Spakovsky is with us. He is with the Heritage Foundation, the former commissioner of the Federal Election Commission, senior legal fellow with the Heritage Foundation. Hans, welcome to the program. Thanks, Tom, for having me on. Thanks for joining us. Now, I understand that you're a big fan of voter ID. Uh, I think it's a common sense reform, and, you know, the, the majority of the American people agree with that. Uh, I think you're right. Uh, I don't think it's common sense, but I think that the, the majority of American uh, people agree with it. I'm wondering if, if voter fraud is such a problem, can you please name for me one person who has gone to jail or even been arrested for fraudulently voting for political purposes? I don't know about political purposes, but I can name you all kinds of prosecutions of people who have been convicted of uh, voter fraud. And uh, you in, know, in almost all those cases, though, as a former election, uh, as the former commissioner of the FEC, you know that those were almost all people who were felons trying to vote in states where felons are not allowed to vote and they didn't realize it. No, that, that is incorrect. Uh, the, the Justice Department, for example, the largest voter fraud uh, prosecution case it ever conducted was in Chicago in the mid-1980s. They convicted over 60 individuals of uh, voter fraud, and it included everything from voting in the names of people who were dead, uh, uh, casting fraudulent absentee ballots, uh, stuffing ballot boxes in right. polling places. There, there okay. are a lot so of convictions. The, so like the, biggest, the biggest case in the American history was 60 people. Well, if you don't think that's uh, uh, important, I can tell you that the federal grand jury that investigated that case right. and the U.S. attorney estimated that in that election, 100,000 fraudulent ballots had been uh, cast but they in had, the election. They, they were able to account for 60. And, and, you know, I totally agree with you that if a politician is paying people to vote for him, uh, if you have, you know, and, and, and some cities are famous for their political machines and there have been uh, problems in the past, but if a politician is paying you to vote for him, uh, there should be a prosecution. I mean, you know, uh, Blagojevich is in jail right now for a variation on this, but it, although it didn't have to do with specifically with the voting, it had to do with selling a Senate seat. But, but I, I am astounded that a reasonable and rational person like yourself would advocate for laws that have already knocked 5 million Americans off the voting rolls because older people who are housebound can't get out to get ID, and now they can't even cast an absentee ballot. Uh, people who live in urban areas and who can't afford a car also can't afford to get out to the DMV, can't afford to take a day off work and stand in line all day, can't that, afford Tom, the cost that, of the that driver's five, license. That $5 million figure, I mean, five million person figure is, is a number, uh, an estimate made up by the Brennan Center. It, it is wrong. And if, if you well, what do you think know, it is then? Look, hey, look at the experience of Georgia and Indiana. They've had their photo ID laws in place now for over six years. There has been no downturn in the turnout of voters there. In fact, the turnout but those, of those laws are not as draconian advantage. as the laws that were just passed in Ohio and Wisconsin. Uh, that and, that is incorrect. Uh, the Supreme Court said that Indiana's photo ID law, which it upheld, was the strictest photo ID law in the country. The, these other laws are similar to those. I think the Justice and Department the, would tell you the Texas law was the strictest in the country. They just challenged it in court, federal court. I yesterday. know, and, and Texas has already sued them, and I, 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 I'd be happy to put a bet but, on you but that he, by the time it gets to the U.S. Supreme Court, Texas will win. Well, given the makeup make of the Supreme Court right now, I wouldn't take that bet. But again, 60 people, the biggest prosecution in American history, 
And you say the 5 million people being knocked off the rolls by this is an incorrect number. I'm wondering what you think the correct number is. Is it uh, 500,000? No, the correct number is none. Uh, the ACLU and the NAACP sued both Georgia and Indiana in federal court. And one of the reasons both cases were thrown out by the federal judges, the judges specifically said in their opinion, that neither organization had been able to produce a single individual, a single witness who would be unable to vote because of the photo ID law. Uh, now, you what, can read that in. You can read that. that that's sure. the federal court decision saying that. Okay. Here, this is clip number one, Jacob. This is Tim Thompson. He was a. Uh, he's an American veteran, an old guy, and he showed up to vote in the primary a couple days ago. And and they said, "Sorry, you can't vote. You don't have the right ID." Here he is. What we should do is vote those people out of office that put this law in effect because they don't have our rights in, in the best interest. They don't have the American people's rights in the best interest. If they want to put a condition on our rights, that's not justice. Hans, as you know, more people are killed by lightning strikes in the United States than are acu- in, in, a, in a single year than are accused of voting fraud in a decade. This is a problem this is a solution. You guys are offering a solution to a non-problem. Why not focus on things like the fact that we have 50 million uninsured people in this country or that, you know, one in five children in America experiences food, experiences actual hunger in the course of a year? I mean, why not look at some real problems in America instead of saying, oh, we've got to stop people from voting? Uh, this won't stop people from voting, and I doubt that the 46 uh, voters in St- Troy, stop New Tim York, Thompson who, from voting. Who have no. The, 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 Troy, New York, right now has a voter fraud prosecution ongoing. They've already had 46 voters come in to testify that ballots were cast in their names when they didn't vote. I, I think they probably believe that uh, making sure we have a Then let's system, prosecute some people. You already have laws against this. Uh, without voter ID, uh, it is extremely difficult to detect uh, the kinds of voter fraud that it can prevent. Well, you know, people rob a liquor store. You, they don't show their ID. Police catch them. Look, you have to, if you apply for food stamps, if you go to, into a drug store to get a prescription filled, uh, there's a million things you have to show I have never ID had. For. I have never had a pharmacist ask me for ID. Well, I have, and I've had that. You must be getting narcotics. At, at, <laughs> at a doctor. Uh, look. I've never had a doctor you, ask me for Tom, ID either. We can argue about this, but you can look at the turnout figures in the states that have had photo ID law in place for years, and none of the predictions that you're making, none of the predictions being made by the Brennan Center have borne fruit. All of those states, uh, people have gotten out to vote. Their turnout Then has why do you care so much increased. about this? Why, why is it that Republicans for 30 years have been pounding this drum of we've got to make it harder for people to vote? It doesn't make it harder for people to vote. What it does is ensure that we have uh, secure... And Tell that to Tim election. Thompson, an American vet who didn't have the right ID. Tell why that to, didn't to he, Why didn't he go and get the free photo ID that's offered by every single state that has passed one of these laws? Maybe he didn't have the time or the means. And why should anybody have to do that? Why in this country should people have to jump through hoops to vote? Well, we're one of the only Western democracies that doesn't require You're using this, the exact think, same language think, that they were using in the Jim Crow South to it, justify poll taxes with, and literacy tests. Jim Crow whatsoever. The literacy test. That, uh, go, that is a Google literacy test. That is a historically preposterous Google literacy uh, test and look at all the quotes from all the people saying this is necessary to protect the integrity of our elections. This has nothing to do with that whatsoever. Okay, hang on just a second. This is the Tom Hartman Program. Hans von Spakovsky, you can read all about it at heritage.org. Hans, thanks for coming on the show and talking. Sure thing, Tom. Bye-bye.